What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video we're going to be reviewing the Cynodo Tempo Pad MIDI controller. I want to thank Lucas from Cynodo for reaching out and sending me over the Tempo Pad for me to check out. So we're going to go ahead and start with an unboxing of this pad. And the first thing we're going to be welcomed with is going to be the Tempo Pad which is wrapped in a nylon little pouch here which is super soft and the temple pad is relatively small. So if we look at it, the temple pad has the black and purple color scheme. So far, the build quality is really good. This feels very durable, especially if you travel a lot. This is a nice little pad to take with you so that you're able to map out all of your sounds and be able to take care of some of your tracks while you're on the go. The next thing we have is this orange box here. And in here we have our USB-C cable is actually a USB to a USB-C. So you wanna make sure that you have the port for both of these. I know that Max today's bring USB-C, so just make sure you have a hub to connect the other side of it. I'm sure you can also connect maybe like third-party USB-C ones, but this is a nice orange cable that matches the color scheme that Cynodo has for their packaging. And then we also have a MIDI cable that you can use. So here we have the Cynodo connected and powered just by the USB-C cable. So once you connect it to your computer, all you need to do is hit the power button up here and it automatically turns on with no additional cables. You also have the option to connect it to a DC 5 volt if you want to power that with a separate power hub. And then you have the MIDI out here. So this is where you will connect the other side of that cable that I showed you. Connect it here and then you can use a MIDI cable to pass it through any other MIDI instruments you have or if you have a rack for that. So we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the build quality on the pads and the knobs itself. So as we turn these knobs, these knobs are incremental so you can kind of feel the click every time you turn the knob, which might be a good thing or might be a bad thing. Personally, I feel like you can probably have two knobs that are incremental and maybe two knobs that are smoother so that you can get more of those micro tunings between the pitches. But relatively, it feels really nice to turn and at least you feel like you're doing something with the knob. Another cool thing about these knobs is that they're 360 knobs, so they don't stop at a certain point. You can just continue to rotate them. Again, this might be a good thing and this might be a bad thing, but I feel like it's pretty cool to have it that way. That way, when you are sending MIDI signal to any of your controllers or any of your sounds, it doesn't really matter where the knob is positioned. It can kind of catch on wherever it's supposed to. So the next thing we have under the knobs here is we have six different functions on the Cynodo pad. So we have the knob bank, we have the pad bank, we have mode, velocity type, tap tempo, and the note repeat. So the knob bank, which is displayed here with colors, the knob bank has three different banks. It has a red bank, which is one, we have the green bank, which is your second bank, and then we have the third bank, which is blue. And then the little LEDs under the knob will also change depending on which bank you're in. So the pad bank is gonna be this side of the MIDI controller. And again, we have three different colors. We have the green bank, we have the blue bank, and we have the red bank. You can save up to three different settings or configurations within these pads. The next button we're gonna look at is the mode button. So we have two modes. We have the red mode and we have the green mode. So the red mode is going to be a chromatic system inside of the pads. So if we start playing from the bottom left, this is gonna be our C, this is gonna be C sharp, D, D sharp, and you continue going up the chromatic scale. And then we have these two knobs on the top right, which are gonna control our octave setting. So if we wanna go an octave lower, we're gonna press the left one. And if we wanna go an octave higher, we're gonna press the right one. You can also see inside of the MIDI pad that we have these little writings. So you can see that it says octave minus and octave plus. So if we look at the velocity types, we have four different types. So the white velocity type is gonna be a fixed velocity type. So this one you can actually configure, but by default, it's at velocity 127. So no matter how hard you hit these pads, it's gonna be at a fixed velocity. If we go to the blue colored velocity type, it's gonna be the lowest velocity type it has. If you go to the green one, then you're gonna get a medium velocity type. 
and then if you go to the red one it's going to be the hardest velocity type it just depends on your playing style if you tap your pads really hard then you're probably going to want to be on the blue setting if you are a medium pressured player you're going to want to be in the green one and then if you just tap the pads really lightly but you want it to sound strong then the red option is the way to go next we have our tap tempo which is going to be on the top right and the tap tempo is going to allow you to control the note repeat which is right under that so if we tap our tempo and we play something inside of the doll then the note repeat is going to follow that tap tempo and then below that we have our basic transport controls so now we're going to go ahead and check out some of the functionalities inside of Cubase and also using the Cinedo app. So we're going to go ahead and create a minor pentatonic scale using the software Cinedo has provided for us. And I'm going to show you how to actually program it so you can see how easy it is to set this up. So we're going to go ahead and first get our hardware settings and then we're going to go ahead and configure our channels here. So the first note is going to be C2. We're going to make the second note the flat three. So we're going to do D sharp two, which should also be equivalent to E flat. Then we're going to go to F two. We're going to put this fourth one into G two. We're going to go to pad number five and then do A flat two. So now if we send to hardware and we play these first five pads, we're going to see that we have a pentatonic scale. So we went ahead and configured the entire pad to mimic the C minor pentatonic scale. So we have uh, starting from C2, we go up the pentatonic scale, then we go to C3. And then here we go to C4 all the way up to C5. So now let's go ahead and send that to the hardware and see what we get inside of Cubase. So now from here, if I hit the pads going up, I should hear a C minor pentatonic scale. All right, so now we can go ahead and just create with Keyscape. So as you can see, using the Cinedo Tempo Pad makes creating music super easy and very customizable using the software that you're able to download straight from the Cinedo website. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this pad. And if you would like me to dive a little bit deeper into the functionalities of the Tempo Pad, you can get quite creative using this pad, especially with all of the customization that you can do with it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you in the next video.